Yo, what's up, everybody? Coming at Yeha here on the Chess.com YouTube channel. This is International Master Daniel Wrench, and today, as you can see from the title, we are here to discuss the French defense, another very mainline and popular opening that you must know for your tournament chess career that you've been waiting to unleash upon the world as you dominate your way to the top of the chess world. Well, the first thing you got to do is know the mainline tournament openings that are used by the best players in the world, and that's the purpose of our chess openings playlist here on YouTube, the Chess.com channel. So subscribe today and you will be up to date on everything you need to know. So the French defense occurs after the moves e4, e6, d4, d5. There are three mainline structures that can occur from the French defense. The first being an advanced structure here, which allows white counterplay and potential space on the king side, particularly with his pawn on e5, serving as an anchor for that attack. What do I mean by that? Usually, when you have a pawn on e5, that by definition means there is never a knight on f6, which by definition means without a knight on f6, black's king side is harder to defend. So whenever white has a space advantage in the center with a dark square chain like this, especially with an e5 pawn standing at the, at the forefront of that long spear, white will typically get good king side counterplay. From Black's perspective, he would like to use the queen side in order to develop his pieces and to exert more pressure against White's center with the eventual goal that White might either lose that pawn or perhaps give in to capturing on c5, which in turn, any sort of break like this, regardless of when it happens, here it wouldn't quite be the most common way for White to take the pawn as it would immediately create these problems. But even if it happens down the road, if White ever breaks and, and, and gives in and blinks first by capturing on c5, Black will not only gain immediate space toward the king side because of this open diagonal, but usually the e5 pawn, which as we just said before is White's catalyst for an attack, will, will start to become a much weaker target and uh, a very easy, easy plan for Black to develop and, and start to put pressure against that pawn. So the first structure that can be reached is an advanced structure. As I said, white's playing on the king side, black's playing on the queen side. Second structure that can be reached is the exchange structure, which is essentially a symmetrical structure with very little pull for either side in terms of uh, d the dynamics of the pawns. Obviously, the open E file, because it's the only open file, will be a critical fighting point for both sides. White has a few different ways to follow up the exchange structure. One of them is just being to develop pieces and eventually try to get castled and, and fight for the, uh, the open E file in this square. Um, and the other might be to try to play the move c4, which potentially invites either an isolated queen pawn type position or a position where black and white are both defending against the critical point and pressure surrounding the d5 square. So we've discussed that a chain structure can be reached, the exchange structure can be reached, and finally, Carol Slav's structure, which is actually a structure that occurs from many other mainline openings, we'll call it the classical French structure for this case, can occur if white simply chooses to develop and defend the e4 pawn, either with knight to c3 or knight to d2. Either one of these moves can be met by captures on e4, after which we have a structure where white has two potentially uh, more advanced pawns in the center gaining space. However, black has a very solid structure, will typically try to strike eventually with either the move c5 or e5, as well as combining that with plans of putting pressure against the open D pawn that is now a target along the open D file, the semi-open file for black. So those are the mainline pawn structures that can occur from this opening. To talk quickly about the five mainline opening variations, we'll give them names now that we've talked about the structures and the general plans. We're going to outline it quickly for you with the, uh, with the names. So e5 itself is the advanced variation of the French. And after c5, c3, queen to b6, white typically plays knight f3. And now after the move knight to c6, black is exerting pressure against the pawn, and white has a few different ways of play here. One of them is and the most popular one is to move a3, with the idea being to play b4, trying to eliminate some of the pressure that black has on this focal point c5. In doing so, he hopes that he can then refocus his efforts to be completely on the king side. Why would a3 and b4 be a necessary plan for that? Well, if you don't somehow eliminate some of black's pressure here, it's very hard to develop this bishop because of the protection it needs on the b-pawn. And if it's hard to develop the bishop, it's also hard to develop the knight, as bringing him to a3 is a sideline square on the edge of the board, and d2 would block the queen's protection of this pawn. So you see that white has trouble developing the pieces if he doesn't try to eliminate some of black's pressure. Another mainline move would be something like bishop e2, just developing and dealing with those things later on, the things we highlighted on the queen side, or even the move bishop d3, with 
the idea of retreating it back to c2. Noted should be that black cannot capture and win this pawn immediately, as at the end of this variation, white has a discovered check against the king, unleashing the queen's attack against the undefended black queen on d4. That, you have it, is the highlighted, most basic variations of the advanced variation of the French. Next, we'll talk about the exchange. As I already said, there isn't much more to add about this except that the structure itself doesn't have very much pull. It's usually a weapon played when white wants to have positions with little little losing chances in regards to uh, uh, black having some sort of dynamic play. Very A very dry cut position. Not to say that neither side can win, just that it's more dry positions and not the most exciting thing. And you know what? I don't really like discussing unexciting positions, so I'm not going to give you much more information on that line than I've already given you. So, the win and work can occur after knight to c3, which is interesting because if black doesn't choose to capture and play the classical, the move bishop b4, e5, c5, a3 heads us into a position that you'll notice looks very strikingly similar to the advanced variation with one critical difference. White's queen side is much weaker in regards to the pawn structure because unlike the position before where white had the same sort of pawn chain, his pawns were not doubled yet and a little bit more cohesive. In this situation, black will have more targets on the queen side, potentially the weak c3 pawn and the isolated a pawn. Well, what did white gain in return for this further weakened queen side? The lacking of black's dark squared bishop on the king's side tends to promote even more aggressive attacking chances for white. After moves such as knight e7, for example, the move 7 queen to g4 is actually the most popular move in this position, immediately exerting pressure against this weak square, intending to bring all of the pieces with full force over to the king's side and checkmate black where he stands. So the winner is one of the most imbalanced and sharp lines of the French. After the moves, both knight to c3 and knight to d2, the other option, as I said, is to take. And after knight f6, bishop g5, bishop e7, takes, takes, we've reached a mainline classical variation of the French, with another popular move for black being the move knight b to d7 here. Finally, the tarrasche. French after knight to d2. If black chooses not to take, he can play knight f6. Noted should be that the winner will move bishop before. Wouldn't make sense here as the move c3 would simply attack the bishop and unpin the knight. And after the move knight f6, e5, knight to d7, something like f4 being popular, you can reach positions that are sort of similar to the pawn chain you reach in an advance or a winner, with one major difference being that white has, has gained extra time for this move f4. However, in doing so, he's also neglected his own development slightly, and therefore black has gained a small amount of an initiative or let's say more developed pieces toward the queen side. Note it should be the knight maneuver I just did there that I didn't play the knight to d2 in order to develop this guy to f3. I intend to bring this guy to f3 so that both of my knights can work together in cohesion in terms of defending the critical point d4. Well that's it everybody. The French just got rocked in your face camel cake. Hope you enjoy it. Chew on that. Hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you around on chess.com.